Right, so this lecture, in this video, I'm going to discuss the uh, concept of uh, trait approach. Uh, there are two uh, personality, famous personality models that, uh, that are um, extremely popular in psychology nowadays. And this lecture would be uh, quite sh short compared to the uh, previous uh, um, themes that you have uh, go that you have gone through. So the first part of this lecture, I'm going to explain to you the idea of uh, the the, <clears throat> the model uh, that we call the five factor model of personality. And the second part of this lecture, uh, I'm going to explain to you the hexaco model of personality. So these two um, models of personality are commonly used in research, uh, in, in most uh, research in psychology. So basically research psychologists, they try to find the connection between uh, these types, uh, these traits, uh, the, the personality, human personality with uh, a lots of, uh, of psychological outcomes from aggressive behavior to, to prosocial pro behavior. So I'm going to review some of those research. So if you are interested in look at look at those uh, research, you can also uh, you can just click on the um, uh, on the on the link that is provided on to you. So first of all, um, I can sense your uh, <laughs> your uh, disappointment by not. Uh, ever taking any personality test on this course now it's time to you to to actually try uh, a personality test so before proceeding to the next uh, to the next topic I uh, urge you to try uh, the five uh, factor model uh, test of personality of subs or sometimes we call it as big five personality tests uh, these uh, two types, uh, these two models are extremely robust and they are scientific, they are backed with robust scientific evidences. So that's why I urge you to take these tests, yeah, to, you, to, get to, 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 to get to know yourself better. And you can also let me know how, uh, how you feel about the result of these tests, maybe by dropping me an email, or you can also uh, tell me about how you feel about this uh, result uh, on on your essay writing after uh, right after uh, listening to this video so this five factor model is actually based on previous uh, psychological fear uh, psycho uh, personality uh, theory that you did not uh, that you don't get in this uh, course that is from Hans Eysenck theory. You can click on the link if you are interested to learning more about this uh, personality theory. So basically, he believed that uh, personality theory is cons uh, consisted of uh, traits and factors. Yes, yeah? so it's very similar to Alport's uh, notion of human personality. So basically, personality is a is a is a is a is a group of is a group of traits. And we derive this tri uh, these traits by using a statistical procedure that we call uh, factor analysis. Yeah. So if you are interested in learning more about factor analysis as a statistical procedure, you can click on the link and you can um, learn it more. Le uh, you can learn. You can know more about this uh, uh, very type of technique. So that's why it's easy. It's possible to do scientific investigation yeah, on personality because it allows us to do statistical procedure. So that's why it's more convincing than, let's say, the inner psychic approach that is extremely difficult to scientifically investigate uh, that uh, personality theory. And those people who proposed this idea is that Robert McRae and Paul, Mc, uh, Paul Costa, he, they, uh, they did a very extensive research in the beginning of uh, 1980, and they called this, uh, these traits, these five central traits, as big five factors. So these five factors are, uh, first of all, neuroticism, extraversion, openness, agreeableness, and conscientiousness. So basically, human personality is a combination of these five uh, different factors that has different intensity uh, for each person. Yeah. 
And these types, uh, these five factors, uh, is actually uh, as a result of uh, more than 25 years and hundreds, or even not hundreds, it's now almost thousands of studies. Uh, and people are very, uh, most psychologists, they are very confident that uh, that that human personality uh, that that they basically this b big five factors is a more um, accurate representation of human personality because we see a lot of evidences that uh, the data the data tells us that came back to this uh, notion of five uh, factor model and I'm going to explain to you what it means by neuroticism extraversion openness agreeableness and also conscientiousness. So these three, uh, these five uh, different uh, dimension of our personality. Uh, first one, the, the first one is the openness, yeah, and it reflects the idea of whether we are, um, whether we are intellectually curious, whether we have the um, the the force of our the desire of being creative. Or maybe a preference to novelty. So this is the uh, this is the factor that relates that is related with creativity. Even though openness and creativity is a completely two different concept. And the second dimension of our big five factor is conscientiousness. This is a tendency reflects a tendency uh, that we uh, that 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 we are more organized and more dependable, and whether we are committed to do something or we are whether we are being responsible when we are given a certain task or certain uh, commitment or responsibility and the third dimension of our personality is extraversion yeah this is a very popular uh, dimension you also found this dimension in Jung's types uh, of personality an extraversion means that uh, it also reflects the tendency to seek company from other people, whether we have more, we, whether we have orientation towards other people, or we tend to be more uh, uh, detached from uh, from social uh, from social relation. The fourth dimension or the fourth factor is agreeableness. It means that whether we could be trusted. Or whether we are, we do ha whether we have a helpful nature, or this is a orientation. Uh, orientation. Uh, this also reflect our orientation to serve other people. And the last part is that uh, neuro neuroticism. That is a factor that reflects our how we respond to uh, psychological stress. So people with higher degree of neuroticism, they sometimes they could not handle higher degree of uh, psychological stress. So um, how personality is measured is by confirming, uh, we use, most often we use self-ratings. So this is, some, this is something that you did previously on the tests. So you basically, you try to uh, assess your own self yeah, from a series of statements and the the scale would measure would ask you to uh, to indicate yourself whether this statement applies to you or not apply to you. And it is more objective. They use objective tests, and you can also use observer reports as well. So you can ask someone else that is close to you to feel a scale to feel this scale. Uh, so they could also measure your personality as well. So you can also combine, uh, you can also compare your own evaluation about your own personality and with other people that is close to you, their evaluation towards your personality. It's possible to do that as well. And McCray and Costa, they initially developed the Neo Personality Inventory, but largely this uh, inventory is is now um, evolved into a more sophisticated form. So people, uh, research psychologists, now they tend to use the Big Five inventory, the BFI. This is the scale that that you uh, that you used in the previous uh, in the previous tests. Uh, you can use that to measure your personality. And 
four from from four four of the five factors of personality in the five factor model it has a more stronger uh, hereditary component but the only one aspects of that five factor has a more in has a more in has a more environmental uh, factor than a hereditary component so your neuroticism and also extraversion openness and conscientiousness those are more affected by our hereditary component but the last one the agreeableness it has a more as a stronger uh, environmental component than its hereditary component yeah so this is a more exact description of each factors yeah so neuroticism uh, someone that score high here in neuroticism they would uh, be more likely to be worried insecure nervous and highly strong and someone who has score who has higher score in extraversion they tend to be more sociable talk active fun loving and affectionate and someone that has high score in openness they tend to be more original independent creative and daring and someone that has higher score in agreeableness they tend to be more good natured soft-hearted trusting and courteous and someone that ha that has a high score of conscientiousness they tend to be more careful reliable hardworking and organized than someone that has lower score in that dimension and some research uh, in psychology that has been that have been conducted in decades it gives us a lot of information uh, on how personality could affect our behavior using this five factor model so some of it you can find it here uh, as a summary of those research so people who has higher score in extraversion they tend to be more stable emotionally and they have then they uh, have higher satisfaction on their lives and they are able to cope with their everyday stress they get higher grades and even they enjoy high status in prominence in college yeah so having higher extraversion could be beneficial for you yeah and someone who has higher score in conscientiousness they tend to be more reliable efficient punctual and they get better grades because they are more determined than other students who has higher uh, lesser score in conscientiousness they tend to be more well organized disciplined and they have and they set high personal goals and they accepted by their peers and have more friends they would be healthier and live longer and they will sit seat belts more often exercise get enough sleep eat more fruits and vegetables and basically those who has higher score in conscientiousness would be would have a more organized life than the one who has lesser score in this dimension and those who has higher score in conscientiousness agreeableness openness and extraversion would be more likely to be popular they judge more attractive they get they get good grades they cope well with stress be a good parents and prefer dogs over cats this is a very debatable um, result but i believe that yeah this is very debatable i would say <laughs> the last part and um the next part would be uh cultural and gender differences because uh, a good theory would uh be able to convey uh human behavior regardless of their nationality and their cultural backgrounds but sometimes those goal is not um uh, is too ambitious because we know that cultural uh, backgrounds has a as a as a huge influential uh, force in shaping our personality but at least good theories would be able to detect the general pattern uh, regardless of one's uh, cultural backgrounds or uh, or any kind of back or of their social backgrounds so those five factors uh, have been consistently observed yeah in several countries including the east uh, the eastern countries and yeah, not only the western part of the world but also the eastern part of the world which is very good uh, and it supports that it might be um, our hereditary component that is more influential in defining our personality rather than our uh, environmental circumstances and even mecre and costa 
uh, they claim that big fa uh, the, this big five factor, the five factor model, it could be a representation of common human structure of personality. It's very ambitious, pl uh, very ambitious, but uh, some research psychologists they believe that uh, this uh, model is much better than the previous theories that uh, the psychologists have proposed uh, because it has a good evidence. But the problem is that even though that these five factors uh, have been successfully found in, in more than 50 uh, different nations, but the sample of this research, they taken the sample from uh, from urban literate and well-educated people yeah so it's not uh, including they don't include people who lives in a more small isolated and largely literate illiterate uh, uh, of uh, a group of people so the population would not uh, be re representative to that nation so um, even though it's it is scientifically backed yeah there are lots of scientific evidence that backed uh, this personality models. Uh, the important notion that you you that you might that you might need to uh, remind, remember that uh, that this uh, population that the, the research population it only covers people who has who has uh, who who are who were well educated, who were literate, and they live in urban area. So it does not include people who lives in in a rural area. And also, uh, there is one research which is quite interesting. So this research was uh, this research found that those five factors was not found in a small, isolated, largely illiterate tribal group in Bolivia. So the universality of this theory is still questionable, even though it's very good when it comes to their scientific evidences. Again, the universality would be still. It still remains, and uh, it still remains uh, questionable. And there is also very interesting gender differences, yeah, according to many research and research that carried out in fifty-five countries. It says that the women high, has higher level of neuroticism, extraversion, agreeableness, and conscientiousness than the men. Yeah. So the only uh, factor where men has higher score yeah has higher score than uh, than women is that only agreeableness i forgot so the only uh, the only uh factor where men has higher score than women is that is openness yeah so the openness is the only factor where men has higher score than women Yeah, and um, and these differences is more pronounced in a more prosperous and egalitarian nations when women has more had more opportunity to be educated and greater opportunity to be employed. So that would be uh, the cause of the differences between men and women when it comes to their uh, their uh, personality in the eyes of a five-factor model. And the last part would be a question whether personality is stable or personality is stable over time. Uh, because big five-factor uh, assumes that our personality is largely determined by hereditary component. Of course, it is stable over time. And what, uh, and um, as a, as an as an evidence that uh, the five factors has been more uh, that is found in children, it could be also found in adults, and also a longitudinal research confirms that uh, uh, there is a high level of stability uh, for all five traits. So it's it's uh, it's less likely the composition of those five traits that we have could change dramatically. Yeah, could change dr dramatically dramatically over time. And also a large-scale research review. Of course, there is a possibility of uh, change in our uh, in our uh, personality, and it says that um, neuroticism, extraversion, and openness and openness tend to be decreased uh, when we reach 
uh, 60s and our agreeableness and conscientiousness is rising yeah, increasing uh, with age so the the older we are the more agreeable and the more conscientious we are and that would be the the end of the last part of this lecture